One important decision that every artifact player needs to make is the order in which they play their heroes. While there are no strict rules about which hero needs to be played when, there are certain heroes who do better and worse in various roles. Learning about this topic is especially important for draft since there's no quote unquote net deck for you to follow. This video hopes to help you learn a little bit about this subject and avoid some of the most common mistakes. As you will know, every deck has five heroes, three of which come out on turn one, one on turn two, and one on turn three. Sometimes these are called the flop, turn, and river, which is terminology from poker. Some heroes do better in different positions for a variety of reasons. Let's start by talking about flop heroes. For these guys, you're prioritizing raw stats, survivability, and their ability to participate and affect combat. Axe and Bristleback are the most obvious examples. These guys hit hard, they rarely die, and they're great to establish early. Phantom Assassin is also very good at killing your opponent's heroes, so she is good to play out early as well. Lycan, Enchantress, Champ Protector, and Sven may not have quite as much in the way of aggressive stats, but they are useful at pushing creep combat to work in your favor. For blue heroes, none of them are particularly great at battling themselves, so instead you really just want to rely on maximum survivability. Kama, if you're lucky enough to get her in draft, is great in this position, but other than that, you also have cards like Jamoy, which are reasonable as well. Outside of their ability to engage in combat, though, there are a couple of heroes that have very valuable passive abilities that are useful to get established early. Luna is an excellent example. Her passive ability helps in creep combat, but it also builds charges on Eclipse. Necrophos's passive helps him beef up in early creep combat, so it's useful for him to get established early as well. Now let's talk about round two heroes or turn heroes. The advantage of placing a hero out on turn two is that it's out as long as possible while you still control the exact location that it lands. This helps for heroes that have powerful passive abilities but weak survivability. The classic example in my mind is Drow Ranger. Some people like to play her out on round one so they can take advantage of her passability and just hope that she doesn't get eaten by a bear or a bristleback, but a lot of people like to play her out on round two to maximize her chance of actually sticking around and giving you that bonus for a longer time. Prelix and Valormancer are some other good examples. They have very powerful passive abilities but weak survivability, so if you can find a safe corner of the battlefield to take advantage of that, it's a really big advantage. If flop heroes are about stats and survivability and turn heroes are about powerful passives, round three heroes or river heroes are first and foremost about active abilities. When you play them out on turn three, you maximize the amount of the cooldown that you've run down. And in addition, you get a lot more control about where that will be deployed. Take for example, Chen. By playing him out on turn three, his holy persuasion is still a couple turns off cooldown, but you get to place him where you think there will be the highest value targets to use his ability on. Similarly, Sniper, by playing him out on round three, you maximize the amount of the cooldown that is gone so that you can use his headshot on time and on a good target. There are a lot of other great examples of round three heroes like Earthshaker, Skywrath Mage, Tidehunter, etc. I should note though that I'm not talking about any hero that has an active ability as some of them are just a little bit too low impact to really count. Take for example Jamoy and Darkseer. They do have active abilities which are useful but they're not worth really building around. You can play them in the river position, but they also have good enough stats that you can play them in the flop and you'll be pretty happy as well. Beyond the heroes themselves, it's important to take a look at your mana curve. Simply put, if you have a lot of cheap cards of a given color, you should make sure that you have early heroes of that color as well. There's a bit of nuance to this though, as not all the cards are the same. Take Disciple of Nevermore and Assault Ladders. You can technically play these on turn one, but they're not exactly at their best. Compare that though with Mr. Avernus, Unearth Secrets, or Ignite, and they are absolute bangers to play on turn one. 
This goes for the four and five mana slots as well. Is there some particular card that you can say is a huge power spike that you want to be able to play on time every game of one of those given costs? It's probably worthwhile to have a hero of that color in that slot as a result. This is part of the reason in my mind why Tinker is the ultimate river hero. He has a long cooldown ability, but he also comes with a really high impact improvement card and you want to maximize the chance of playing that on time. Taken in the reverse though, it is sometimes possible to learn a little bit about your opponent's deck based on their hero composition and positioning. Recently in draft, I played against a blue-black-green draft deck where the only green hero was Farvon being played in the flop. It's a little bit unusual to see a deck splashing one hero of a given color and that hero is just a, a basic. So to me, this suggests that they probably had some copies of Mr. Vernus or Unearthed Secrets, especially given the fact that he was being positioned in the flop. This might make some difference in my decision making around the shopping phase if I have access to Obliterating Orb or Demagicking Maul. Obviously, this is niche, it doesn't come up very often, and sometimes people just make decisions just because, but in this case, it actually ended up being correct. And any information that you can glean from these sorts of tells could be useful to you in certain situations. Finally, let's talk about hero configuration and ordering in relationship to drafting and deck building. It isn't necessary for every draft deck to have heroes specialized to each of the different positions, but sometimes it's a useful consideration in close decisions. Take Tide Hunter as an example. He is, in my mind, quite reasonable as a river hero, but if he's forced to be played in the flop position, he's actually worse than Keef. If you're playing a red-black deck with Sniper or a red-green deck that already has a copy of Chen, it's often better to skip Tidehunter in favor of Keef. Similarly, Necrophos, in my mind, is slightly better than Debbie when played on the flop, especially in more controlling decks, but if he's forced into the other positions of the turn or the river, I would rather just play Debbie. Finally, it is worth remembering that there are no hard and fast rules. These are guidelines that are useful for thinking through your hero configuration and you need to decide what your deck needs. Hopefully though, this does avert some of the worst deck building decisions I've seen, like Sniper being placed out on the flop over something like a Debbie that's being placed in the river for some reason. Just because a hero is better than another doesn't mean they actually want to come out earlier in the game. But that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, be sure to check out my analysis videos. I try to do those basically daily, and there's a lot of great content there. Please like, subscribe, share. It makes a huge difference for a channel like mine that is small and still trying to grow. Also, check out Ink Gaming. They have wonderful custom gaming supplies, and you can check them out and you can save 12% off your order when you use the code ASPACE12. Thank you once again for joining me. Take care, everybody.